Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Last time we picked up the Penis Thrust, which is what I like to call it because Link's sword is the exact same color as his skin, which is, I don't know, that's just kind of awkward. It's also very toothpick-like, but that's besides the point. So we're here in the third palace, and this is where I think the game starts to get really hard, in my opinion. This is just my opinion, mind you, but... It's, um, basically, you start getting all kinds of hard enemies, like that guy. I mean, like, I cast shield, and he did lots of damage to me, so... It just starts to happen, and then look at how many hits this guy takes to kill. Well, first, if he'd stop jumping around like a moron... This... Dude, what are you doing?! That's okay. For the very first part of this dungeon, I can actually afford to be a little bit careless when it comes to taking hits, because I'm just about to level up and gain, a, like, a life level, so... So that's okay. Um, I want that magic, man. I'll take it. I'll take the hit from the guy who drains my experience. Also, my cat snuck in my room. And my cat is not supposed to be in my room. First of all, because there's plants in my room, and my cat likes to chew on the plants. So that's not good for them. And second of all, I'm actually allergic to my cats. Um, and, like, basically... I'm only allergic to their dander, so as long as they don't get all of their hair and their, like, drool and stuff on my pillows and bed, I'm okay. But that means they can't spend extended periods of time in my room, either. So yeah, it's okay. We can afford to be careless with guys like that. So, because, uh, just because of the life level up that we got at the start. So, we're actually going to be kind of hard-pressed to get enough experience to, to basically meet the goals that I want to accomplish. Now, if this Mew would get down here, I don't want him interrupting my fight with his Iron Knuckle. Oh, that was pretty good. That was a good shot there. Alright. One, two, three, four. Boom, you're dead. Thank you, come again. So, yeah. I don't know, I think there's just barely enough experience to get to where we need to be bef before the boss. Well, actually, if he drops a pea bag, then we're definitely in good shape. That's actually doubly good news, because it means that I can save on experience, um, or actually I can save on magic, because there is one pea bag in this dungeon that you can, um, you can cast jump and get it basically right before the boss, but I don't like to because jump is still kind of expensive at this point in the game. I'll see if I can make that. Oh, yay, I made that jump, which is actually pretty difficult to make without, um, if you haven't cast the jump spell, so... Yeah, we're looking in pretty good shape so far, as long as that guy doesn't hit me with his fire. I don't know, this palace is where I usually have my first death in this game. Even on my practice run, I was doing really, really well in this palace, and then I died to the boss, which is just kind of unfortunate. Because the boss isn't like... I don't know. I want to say that the boss is hard, but the boss isn't as hard as like I'm making it out to be. So anyway, you go right here, and you get into this room, which makes me incredibly m nervous. And I have died in this room way too many times for me to be comfortable telling you how many times I've died in this room. Just by, like, making stupid mistakes, by, like, getting knocked back by a bot and falling into the lava. Or, like, actually one time I was playing this, I was jumping, and I hit these bricks in midair, and the knockback from attacking the bricks knocked me into the lava pit. I felt like a real fool then. Cat, get out of my way. He's running all around here. I think he wants... Hang on a second, I'm gonna let him out. Alright, do you want to go out? Here's the door. Get out, you. <laughs> yeah. He's a big black cat. His name is Spooky, because he's a Halloween kitty. That's We actually found him on Halloween back when my family was living in Texas. Way back when I was a little kid. So anyway, here we've got our first fight with a blue iron knuckle. And I'm going to explain this the best I can. Basically, the iron knuckle trick that I've been using to fight these guys all game works on them just like it works on any other iron knuckle. But the problem is you can't really safely do the barrage of quick attacking them over and over again like I've been doing on the orange and red ones. Because after you hit them once, they'll throw that big barrage of knives at you. Now, these guys do a lot of damage, and just because anything can go wrong at any given moment in this game, I like to cast shield when I fight these guys, just because it's better to cast shield once than it is to have to cast life, like, twice or something like that. 
just because these guys do so much damage. Yeah, and they take a lot of hits, too. They'll take less the further you get in the game, obviously, but right now they're very tough. Which is why I think the third palace is so hard, because they start introducing really hard enemies into you, but you're still at a much lower level than you would be when you're facing them later in the game. So, yeah. Anyway, so that was a pretty good fight. No damage from him, which is always a good thing. And as you can see, they give lots of experience. Anyway, that's the raft that we picked up, which you basically use at one part of the game and then you never use again. You just use it to get into the second half of the world, so... But you do need to get it, so make sure you stop by here. Yeah, there is actually a trick that you can use to fight specific Iron Knuckles, and I think it works on that one in particular, too. It's They call it jackhammering in the speedrun community, which I think is kind of a funny name. I don't know, just because jackhammer is a funny word. But basically what you do is you repeatedly down thrust them, like, over and over again. And then, um... I don't, I, I don't know how to say it, but, like, you hit them so fast that, like, the damage that they do to you doesn't register, or it barely registers or something. And you, it's, like, really hard to do, and I definitely can't do it, so I won't, I won't even bother trying to do it. I am actually doing really, really well in this dungeon, but you're at, I'm actually also coming up on my least favorite room in the entire game. Or my least favorite type of room in the entire game. And that's this right here. I'm going to cast shield just because, once again, things can get hairy. Basically, you've got these infinitely spawning guys coming at you from all directions, and you've got to break your way through these blocks to get to a key. And I have not chosen to do this in a very intelligent manner. So yeah, these guys are going to... I'm going to do this the hard way, I guess. Yeah. We've already committed. There's no turning back now. Especially when you, they get you coming from both sides. Fortunately, they don't do very much damage. It's just really more of annoyance than anything. But that's okay. We're almost at... Please stop hitting me! Poor... Oh, god damn it. This is not good at all. Thank you. Okay. Good. I got really nervous when I broke that one block there. But yeah, these guys actually... Um, I've mentioned before in this series already that Nintendo Capri Suns... LP of this game is my favorite LP by him, and he's, like, definitely my favorite lp -er. He's the the only major lp -er that I really watch nowadays. Like, him and Lucajin, too. But those are really the only ones. Um, uh, should I cast shield again in this room? If I do things right, I shouldn't have to. But yeah, he actually calls those orange guys Dad Hustling, and that is my favorite story that he tells on his channel. Like, out of all of the stories. Please get- Damn it! Okay, he wasn't nice to me. So this could be- Well, okay. That could have been a lot worse. But basically what, like, what I like to do is get him right here, where I'm standing right now, and then you can just down thrust on him and hit him over and over again. And when that happens, it's really cool, because he's basically- So there's three of those enemies in this temple. This is actually the room before the boss. Which, for me, traditionally has been one of the hardest rooms in the entire game. I've gotten a lot better at it now, mostly because I just take my time. Anyway, I need to uh, kill these guys, and fighting them in these close quarters is always a joy. And be Especially because if the boss is going to give me 300 301 experience points. And yes, it is 301. It'll say 300, but he actually gives you 301. But if I want to get enough experience to get the double level up. I need to kill both of these iron knuckles, so I have to fight this blue guy in close quarters. And that is not fun at all. That sucks. So, hit him once and then back up, basically. As long as you don't break the blocks on the right-hand side, the other red iron knuckle won't deal with you. Like, he won't be able to attack you. But don't do it the other way, because the blue iron knuckles' daggers will actually fly through the bricks. So... And then you'll basically have no way of blocking them, because you'll be too concerned trying to dodge the red iron knuckle, so... Oh, but yeah, just take it slow here, and take your time. I've gotten a lot better at deflecting these guys' daggers. I don't know, all those quick reflexes from Guitar Hero are finally paying off, I guess. Alright, that was pretty good. Please only have, like, one or two more hits left. This is really, um... 
I don't know. It's tense. I think this dungeon is really, really intense. I already said, I think this is the second hardest dungeon in the game, right after Dungeon 6. Now there's actually like, I don't know, I keep talking about Nintendo Capri Sun's LP of this game, but it really is that awesome and has had that big of an influence on me, because I really do love it so much. But he, um, when he got to this room, he basically was at the very brink of death, like he had one hit left, and he killed both of those Iron Knuckles without taking a hit, and then he killed the boss without taking a hit too, and that is just like mind-blowing. That's just absolutely crazy. I'm trying to decide whether I want to cast Shield or Life, because I think that I'm at the point... Um... Yeah, I don't think I can cast both. So I'm going to cast Shield, I'm going to go for it. Now there's a trick, if I can do this right and trap him in the left side of the screen, you can actually downward thrust this guy to death. Alright. No, he's too far. God damn it, that sucks. Come over here, please. No, he's too far to the left again. See, this guy is really annoying, because he's basically a blue iron knuckle on a horse. And he's... Oh my god, this guy's already done way more damage to me during the easy phase of the fight than I wanted him to, because I tried to jump on him. Oh god, dude, get away! See, he's like not on the screen right now, which is just really annoying. But this guy sucks, because he has different AI from regular Iron Knuckles. Like, he'll throw a lot more daggers than the other ones do. And I hate fighting this guy, because he will constantly run off of the screen, and you won't be able to fight him. And he, he just has a lot better timing than most of the other Iron Knuckles. So I'm going to try to get him as far to the uh, the side of the screen as I can. And then just get as many hits in as fast as I can. Okay. Dude, get away from that side of the screen, please. Come over here. Get over here. Come on. Oh, wow. Sorry, I stopped talking there for a second. That just got really intense. And it is not every day that I beat Palace 3 of Zelda 2 without dying. We are deathless so far. Oh my god. It's basically confirmed deathless run at this point. This is like, I am so happy right now. So happy. Oh my god, this is freaking fantastic. And we get lots of experience now. This is freaking perfect. Oh my god, freaking A, man. Magic level 6, life level 6, attack level 5. This is looking awesome. So, um, next time on Let's Play... Well, I guess I can kind of walk back to the town. I'll show you what we're gonna do next time. Oh god, not, not this. I don't have time for this shit. Yeah, look at that. Two hits now for a blue Goria. I'm gonna fight the other one just because I feel like it. Kick his bitch ass. Yeah. The way that attack levels up in this game is really weird. Like, it's not even... It's like... It's not linear, it's not a formula, it's just like a table. It's just really strange. So, yeah. But basically, um... I don't know. Oh, man, I'm just really excited because... Wow, 200 point pee bag. Very nice. So, yeah, that was really intense for me. Oh my god, that was crazy. Not quite as epic as Nintendo Capri Sun's victory over those guys. Ah, I gotta stop talking about his LP, though. Seriously. But yeah, so... Next time on Let's Play Zelda 2, we're gonna go to the second half of the world. Yeah, there is an entire second half of the world, but I'm gonna get out of the graveyard first because this place is awful. So yeah, I will see you then. Bye.